when you go to a dance and you see the collar up there, you the the impression is that the dancers are following what the collar is telling them to do. But in the southern dances, it's actually reversed, and the collar is following the dancers. And as a collar, I have to see the dancers to get the timing right. If you blindfolded me, I'd have trouble calling southern squares. I could call contras blindfolded because I can count to six and give the next call. But in order to get the timing right in southern squares, you have to see the dancers, and they set the timing for the dance. So if there's a group that's going a little bit slower through the figures, my call comes out a little bit later. But if they're faster, then it comes out earlier. And, and the timing completely follows, follows the dancers rather than the dancers following the calls, as it would be in the New England tradition. In the old days uh, in the South, there were not big dance halls, and people, houses, houses were where dances took place. So you had house dances, and you may only be calling for one set of dancers, so the caller was one of, the, you know, oftentimes one of the dancers. I have been at dances uh, in recent times where that's happened in a bigger hall, and yes, each set has, a, has their own caller, and that's fine. And when you think about the calling thing is, uh, you know, a contra dance, once you get them started, they're on their own. You don't have to keep calling. And so contras are not, you don't have to have a caller. If people know the dance figure, uh, you don't, a caller is not necessary. But for the southern dances, you absolutely have to have a caller or else they, they, just, they just wouldn't work. And that's something that I love about the southern, southern squares is they're not composed dances. So I can call Bird in the Cage and I can do it does different choreography from one night to the next and three different callers could call Bird in the Cage and it's not the same dance. It may have that one same figure but it's not the same composed dance. And um, the, the names of southern dances are, are basically named after that one figure. You know, Bird in the Cage, Duck for the Oyster, whatever. And you as the caller, it's your own creativity, how you want to present that figure, or it could be a community's um, tradition, how they dance that figure. Say in, in, uh, in the contra dance tradition, the names of the dances are not like, we're now going to do the ladies' chain, you know. The names of the dances are, they're composed, either after a famous person or a famous event or, or something like that, or nowadays some kind of funny, funny idea. Uh, but these are composed things that are made up out of component parts. And the southern dances, the, the name of the dance is the name of the main figure you're going to do. And then how you, how you put that together in your choreography is up to you and, on that particular night. Well, if I say I'm going to call Bird in the Cage, right. everybody knows at some point there's going to be a circle with a person dancing in the middle. That's given. What comes before or after is totally up to what I feel like doing on that particular night. Sometimes if, they're, if I'm calling for an elder hostel group, I'll do dances with fewer swings, because people don't like to do a lot of swinging. If I'm calling for kids, I might do something different. Uh, so there's lots of ways you can change it based on who's in front of you. So it's, it's, it's nice. And, and as a caller calling Southern dances, it's very creative, uh, because it's, you're, you're making up as you go. And it is spontaneous.